Hi, in this video I want to take a quick look at epithelia or epithelial tissue. Now epithelial tissue is one of the four types of tissues in the body. Those four types are epithelial tissue, connective tissue, nervous tissue and muscular tissue. And if you look at the organs or organ systems of the body, they contain basically all four tissue types. And they basically interact and communicate with, it, uh, with each other in order to form a fully functional organ or organ system. So in this video, I just want to focus on epithelial tissue. And we're going to talk in this video about the definition of epithelial tissue, its basic function, and its anatomy, what it looks like. And then in the next video, we're going to classify all the different types of epithelial tissue that you can find in the body. So, first thing I want to talk about is, what does epithelial tissue do? Well, epithelial tissue is a covering. So if you look at the other four, so all four tissue types, you could broadly describe them as that epithelial tissue is a covering. You can say connective tissue is there to support. You can say nervous tissue is there for communication and control. And you can say that muscular tissue is there in order to provide movement. So if we look at epithelial tissue, I said that epithelial tissue forms a covering. So when you're looking at me right now, you're looking at my epithelial tissue. But that's not the only place in which it is. Forms a covering and lines our body cavities. So lining our body cavities. So lines the hollow body cavities. So I want you to think about where that could be. So if you look at the uh, urinary tract, Epithelial tissue lines the inside of our urethra and ureters and bladder. It also lines the inside of our oral cavity and our esophagus and our trachea and our stomach and the rest of our internal GRT. So as you can see, epithelial tissue basically lines the outside and the inside of our body. Now, why? Well, epithelial tissue provides a barrier between environments. So it provides a barrier between environments. And this is important because it allows for certain environments to be separated from one another. Sometimes you don't want substances from one area to penetrate through to substances of another area. What are the general functions? of the epithelial tissue. So yes, it forms a covering and it's a barrier. So you could say that, okay, one of its functions is to provide a barrier. So you could say protection. What are some other functions? Well, it also provides a means of filtration as well. It can play a role regarding absorption. Also, secretion, secreting substances from cells, excretion, getting rid of substances from the body, and finally, it can play a role in sensory, sensory reception. Basically a means of picking up what's happening in our external environment or even internal environment. So we've got six major functions of the epithelial tissue. It protects us, and we know that in regards to our skin. It plays a filtration role, specifically in the kidneys. You know that the types of cells that allow for filtration to occur are modified epithelial cells. Absorption, so we can absorb substances into cells. You think of the GIT, for example. Secretion, we can secrete mucus and enzymes. Excretion, getting rid of substances that we just don't want anymore. And sensory reception, when you think of the nervous tissue that it penetrated through into our epithelium. So let's actually draw some epithelial cells up and have a look at the general similarities between all epithelial types. So... Epithelia comes in different shapes and sizes, and the next video will focus on those different shapes and sizes. So what I'm going to draw up here is a very simplistic version of epithelial tissue. 
What you have, first of all, are some simple cells, and these are epithelial cells. And obviously these cells have a nucleus to them, so I'll draw that nucleus in. Now you're going to have the cells that are exposed to the environment, whether that be the external environment, so the top of the cells here, or the cells that are exposed to the internal environment, such as the hollow inside of the GIT or ureter, for example. You're always going to have one part of the cell that's exposed to that environment, and that part of the cell is called the apical side. So you've got an apical side. You've also got the side that's not exposed to the environment, and that's called the basal side. Okay? Now, what you'll find is that underlying epithelial tissue at the basal side we've got this lamina so we have this lamina here there's actually two laminas there's one that underlies it and they're both connective tissue so connective tissue which you're soon going to find out in one of the other videos is made up of gels and fibers and provides structure and support So these are both lamina. Together, these lamina make the basement membrane. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, the basement membrane is important because as you can see, even though I've drawn this a little bit on an angle, the basement membrane, again, tells these epithelial cells, this is the bottom, this is the top, do not penetrate through. In cancerous cells, if epithelial cells become cancerous and continue to grow and divide, what you'll find is that in cancer, epithelial cells can penetrate the basement membrane. This is important because what is on the other side of this basement membrane? Blood vessels and lymphatic vessels and so forth because that then allows for cells, mutant cancerous cells, to be able to transport through the bloodstream travel to distal regions and form secondary uh, metastasizing tumors or cancers. So in cancers, this basement membrane is broken and some cancerous epithelial cells can move the way through, okay? Now, that means that epithelial cells are avascular. That means they do not have a dedicated blood supply to them. You can see that the blood supply for epithelial cells are located in the connective tissue that is underneath. That's where the blood supply is. So they're avascular. However, they do have nerves and nerve endings and receptors. So you've got nerves that come up through and provide sensory reception. Because remember we stated that one of those six functions was sensory reception. So this is a, just a general brief overview of epithelial cells. You have an apical area, a basal area, and a basement membrane, which is connective tissue. It is avascular, doesn't have a dedicated blood supply, which means its blood is laying in the connective tissue. You may ask, how does it stay alive then? Diffusion. So you've learned about diffusion. All the substances that need to feed these epithelial cells will diffuse out of the bloodstream and diffuse up to the cells themselves. That's how they get fed from the blood supply. This also includes oxygen as well. Oxygen is going to diffuse out of the blood supply to these cells as well. And even though they're avascular, they do have dedicated sensory nerves coming through. So these may be mechanoreceptors, thermoreceptors, chemoreceptors, for example. So that's a brief overview of epithelial cells. The next video is very important because we're going to look at all the different types of epithelial cells, something that you may be assessed on.